right here today with the all new Tamron 35 to 150 now for Nikon. And uh, first thing I want to say without the screen recorder up here, this thing balances really well. I'm going to say I like how this handles, like how this feels more than this lens on my Sony camera. I've been using this lens on my Sony camera a lot over the past year. And it is one of the primary reasons why I actually shoot Sony for most wedding days now. Let's go take some pictures. We're now joined by Clarissa. And uh, what is she going to be? What would you like to be today? What is your business? You can have a seat here. Well, now you're ready for LinkedIn in four seconds or less. So this lens, it's honestly incredible. I've been using the 35 to 150 for pretty much every ceremony since this lens came out and I was able to buy it. And it's a lens that I wish that I would have had going back years and years and years. Um, this is the one piece that was missing, I think from my wedding photography kit. The 7200 was the lens that I would typically go to for a ceremony. And now I don't need it at all. I also don't need a 24 to 70 because this covers both of them. Starts at F2, so when you're at 35 millimeters, this is what it looks like. And then when you're at 150 millimeters, which we're not gonna be able to do in the studio, that's what it looks like. Both are nice. I wish it was kind of an F2.8 lens all the way across because it could have been a lot smaller. So if that happens in the future, I'll be happy about that. Let's go outside. Exciting, exciting update. Every day, Monday to Friday, all September long, new video coming to members. So if you're a member, you get access to everything that you're seeing on the screen right now. Lots of videos. And also October 1st, the members website goes up to $399 per year. So get in, lock in the old rate. You can also still do the monthly, but the monthly is gone starting October 1st. Let's get back to talking about the lens. Here we go. As you can see, the autofocus, it's gonna keep up nicely. All right. And taking lots, you can't actually see when I take the photos, but I promise that I'm taking lots of them. And you can also see that as I zoom, it just automatically updates from F2 to F2.8. So now we're gonna do some video autofocus tests. And as you can see, I don't know, no problems whatsoever. Gotcha. There we go. So if you are somebody that's like Nikon, autofocus is still lagging behind. I don't believe it is. Also from the lack of rolling shutter, you can actually just do walking shots like this. I find that with other uh, specifically higher megapixel cameras that when you're walking, you just kind of get that jello, that bounce. But as you can see, it's not steady cam quality, but it's, it's pretty darn close. And autofocus, do you want to take a walk down that way and, and come back? And the autofocus is just great. Very, very happy. Now let's set the high-res clip to a Netflix intro for a murder mystery show. As you can see, even when zooming, focus holds really nice. For some reason I was in DX mode, I don't know why. Uh, it will work even though there's more data technically coming at the sensor. In my experience it works the exact same in full frame, so don't stress about that. And walking looks really, really good. This is a big lens too. Yeah. These are some final edits. I'll show you more from the interior of the camera through the screen record in a few moments from now. They do a seafood tower here? Of oysters. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you have a plant kind of growing out of your head. Sweet. There, that's better. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, can I have you in front of these, uh, these lines here? All right, so wedding day, this lens will do everything that you need. It will do it all day. And while it does balance a little bit better on this camera, it's still gonna be a bit of a pain to carry from getting ready all the way to the reception. Also, F2.8, it's fine and usable once you get into the reception, but something like an 85 millimeter F1.4 or F1.8 might be a better solution overall. In terms of getting ready, it's also a bit of an aggressive kit to walk into a small room with people you've just met. It's like, they know you're there to be the photographer, but I don't know. I like to kind of gear it down a little bit, be a little bit more fly on the wall and less, uh, Hi there, I'm here to take your picture. That doesn't have to be for you. That's just what I do. All right, can I have you where this uh, this chair is here? Yeah. Do you want to sit on? Do you want to sit on the chair? We can do some really dynamic seated uh, photography here. You can also uh, lock this to f 2.8 if you want. So if you're in aperture priority mode, you're gonna set this to f 2.8. Um, so if you are doing video, that you're not gonna be getting any exposure adjustments in your zoom range. But then you don't get that 35 F2, but it does make your video a little more cohesive, I think. We're also not doing video correctly today where we're uh, shooting everything at one slash 
one thousandth of a second. Let's go where there's no bees. A lens like this Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8 is great for indoors. As I mentioned before, once you get into really, really low light environments, it probably makes sense to switch it out that it's still, you can get by, you might have to add some either on camera or off camera lighting. But a situation like this looks really, really nice. Oh, this is a nice one, Liam in the back there. Hey buddy. Another thing you'll notice with this lens is that I don't know how to quantify this. I wish that I could. Um, when headlights come at the lens, it feels like there's a bit of a mist filter applied. I don't know if it's like a quarter mist or one eighth of a mist. And that might be seen as a negative, but I personally, as somebody that photographs a lot of people, I see it as a positive. I think we're using this mist filter on this. Yep. So we use mist filters on everything because cameras are too good, which is a very hilarious problem to have. The fact that Sony and Canon and Nikon and Tamron and all the other lens manufacturers making this really, really high quality, perfect glass. And then we're taking a hundred dollar filter and being like, I want it less good. I want weird flare. I want the, the light to do interesting and unique things. So maybe a negative, but I like it a lot. It just photographs people better, I think. This lens also comes with a lot of great buttons. So you get two buttons, you get AF, MF, and uh, three custom switches. I don't use them at all. I think it might be because I'm a wedding photographer. Uh, maybe if I was into sports and or wildlife, maybe I would have some different settings or I have maybe an AF hold. Um, maybe that's a good thing to have, but I personally don't use them for anything. I will use this AF MF switch from time to time when doing landscape photography. So if I'm out there and focused on a mountain, scenes all set up, I'm just gonna switch it to manual focus. Um, also for astro, I don't think this is an astro lens. I guess it could be if it's all you got, you could, you could make do with the 35 F2. Um, I will also use manual focus for that as well. This sells the dream of Bodega Rose being a working, uh, that you wanna come here to have your work day. That this is your office. Answering my emails, being a freelance writer which is I think what everyone dreamed of. Being at Starbucks with their Macintosh computers, maybe a laptop, maybe bringing your entire iMac display. It's whatever you're feeling. So here we have the, the 50 one two that Liam uses for like what, 90% of a wedding day? 90%. And here we have the Tamron 35 to 150 that has a few different focal lengths other than 50. And uh, I, I don't know if the, the math is on it, but they feel like they weigh the same in real life. The 50 might even weigh a little bit more. So if you're nervous about all the reports of this being the biggest lens in the world and it hurting your arms to carry it all day, if you are somebody that's been shooting with a 512 or you've used a 512 for a shoot, um, know that they're kind of the same. We should try this on there and to see, see how it feels. Liam is the Z9 for every wedding and uh, he now has the 35 to 150 on his camera. And how does that feel, Liam? It feels amazing. It's very close to the 50, just a little bit longer. So a little bit, a little, the balance is a little bit different, but having a gripped body really helps with that. You heard it here first. Z8, Z9, it feels nice. That's all I think. September, 20 videos coming to you. Every day, Monday to Friday, sign up. Tim's excited. He has his YouTube face on right now. You can go. 20 videos. And you can get all 20 videos. They're all on the screen starting right now and uh, you can go get them. And then if you sign up, 100% money back guarantee. You can send me an email here if you got it and you didn't love it. And when you sign up right now, you also get instant access to like $3,500 worth of other stuff as well, such as Book More Writings 2023, my presets, LUTs, an entire course on how to make a highlight film as a wedding photographer, all kinds of things. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying this lens. And I'll see you next time.